Um, welcome on my session. Thank you very nice. For, uh, thank you very much for a nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mariusz, Mariusz Gil, and today I would like to share uh, my experience, how I started to play with machine learning, and uh, I would like to, to show you some some projects where we use the machine learning, some very very basic stuff about how to start. Uh, to, to, to do something with machine learning, no matter if you are a PHP developer, Python developer, or whatever. So, uh, this is my first time at Ukraine, so very, very thank you one more time for the invitation. And it's nice things to, to, to be there. Uh, in Poland, I'm part of the PHP Airs community. PHP Airs community, I always have the slides because uh, a community of the developers is very, very important to me. I love to share my knowledge. I love to, to, to meet a people. So if you would like to, to, to talk about the community, so please join me at the speaker corner after this uh, session. Uh, this blue elephant is very, very important to me because we started this community three or four years ago after the conference. and. After this time, after three or four years, I don't remember correctly uh, how old our community is. All the PHP user groups in Poland, all of them are united under this branch. So we have no separated communities. We've got one huge community of the developers related to the, the PHP. It's uh, great stuff for me. On the daily basis, I'm, I'm running my own company, which is a source ministry, very, very small PHP consultancy. Uh, business, I'm trying to, to help some, some teams, some developers, just to be better. So, let's talk about the machine learning. And uh, I would like to start with real story. And the real story came from my uh, colleague business. My colleague has a very, very uh, efficient and very, very popular website in Poland. It was uh, a website for the women's lifestyle website, very, very popular. In it, this website was in top three uh, in the, the, the lifestyle category for women in Poland, so there was a lot of money involved in this business. But unfortunately, one day, most of this traffic from this website disappeared. Google Analytics show huge drop in the traffic, and if there is no traffic on the website, there is no money behind it. So it was a huge, huge business issue. So after some investigation, my colleague and the team from this company realized, okay, we've got a huge problem because our, probably one of our competitor make a lot of bad links, a lot of black hat CEO, and we were punished by Google. And the index uh, from the Google was updated <laughs> and the links uh, which leads to, 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 to my colleague website were just removed. So if you are not in the Google, you probably doesn't exist. <laughs> so they contacted with Google and they asked, hey, what we can do to fix this problem? How we can restore our position? And the response from the Google was very, very uh, easy. You need to submit a one file, one disavow file with all the links you would like to remove uh, from, the, from the Google index. It sounds easy, <laughs> but this website was very, very popular and was a millions of backlinks in the, in the Google index. So try to, to image how many hours, how much work you, you need to execute, you need to spend to, to prepare this disavow file, uh, because th this file is called disavow file in the Google terminology. So uh, our, class, uh, our, our customer, our colleague, asked us, hey, this is a one million or, or more, I don't remember, it was over one million, one million CSV files with uh, links, just set of URLs, one million length list. So help us and try to classify all the backlink you see in this file into three groups. So if there is a, 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 a file, so we would like to split this file into three groups. One, probably the biggest, should contain a links which are okay for us. I mean, we would like to have a backlinks to our website from this group. And uh, the second group should contain only these links we would like to remove from the Google index. So links from this group should be, uh, 
should be converted to the DSAO file and submitted to the to the Google Analytics. And probably the last one, uh, this part should contain links where com we com completely don't care if this link leads to us or not. So, for example, in the first group, we would like to have a link from the portal, from the gazettes, from the, 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 the news, the blogs, very popular websites. So if you've got, uh, let's say, a website with page rank eight or nine, yeah, definitely you would like to have a link from this website. In this group, you would like to to see probably a, a, a Black Hat CEO website because there are a lot of, a lot of really, really shitty websites in the, in the internet created just to hurt someone. So we discover a whole networks of the of the Black Hat CEO <laughs> website, we are ready to, to to hurt someone. So, what do you think? Is this example sounds artificial or not? The the the, the case from my colleague. Um, to be honest, a couple of years ago it was another huge huge problem in another company. Uh, I'm sorry, this, this, <laughs> this is a, a screenshot from the, the, the Polish uh, newspaper. Uh, the company, uh, the price one of the price um, comparison software called Knockout has a, a plan to, to be uh, listed on our stock market. So before the APO, the initial public offer, the story was exactly the same. They were punished by Google and all the links from this website were removed from the Google index. In this time, <laughs> unfortunately, not because uh, someone creates uh, a lot of Black Hat CEO techniques, but the internal CEO company used some uh, Black Hat CEO techniques. And uh, because no one know about it, so Google decided to, to, to punish this website. So the APO plans were canceled. Uh, over 89% of the traffic was removed and it took a couple of months to restore the position and fix the, the finance problem because this company was in the second place on the Poland uh, in the context of the, 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 the price comparison software but unfortunately after this case they were uh, removed from top 10 if I remember correctly. So, if you've got a list of the URLs, how you can classify them? It's very, very easy to human. Uh, so, just visit this page and decide is it a uh, shitty URL or not, and assign to this, uh, this link to one of the group and repeat <laughs> one million times. So, it shouldn't be uh, very, very uh, efficient. So, the whole story behind both of the, 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 the situation, both the project, was we've got the URL, we've got the just URL, just just plain set of the sets, set of the characters, nothing more, and we would like to apply some transformation to convert this URL into the set of the numbers, vector of the of the features. So, what kind of what kind of features we would like to have? Maybe the age of the domain, maybe a page rank of the domain maybe uh, a length of the page, number of the HTML tags, number of the outgoing uh, links, outgoing from the subdomain, et cetera, et cetera. How many paragraphs we've got, how many H1, H2, H3 uh, headers we've got on this page. If you can convert this URL in the set of the vectors, you will probably will be able to to create some, maybe the algorithm for classification. And our client asked us, okay guys, the, the, the first version, just convert this huge, huge CSV file into the Excel file, and then someone from our team will prepare a formula uh, in the Excel, and this formula will be implemented in your application to classify all the other links. So it was our first approach. <laughs> Iphology, ugly code, just for the proof of concept. It will work or not. And so we prepare a PHP application where all the uh, fetching, all the 
processing were executed uh, using a RabbitMQ servers, a bunch of the servers were uh, um, involved in this situation. We prepared the final uh, XLS file to our client, and after a few days of um, Excel data analysis, our, uh, our client, our colleague said, guys, I'm really sorry, but I don't know how to prepare a formula for that. It's probably impossible because if I would, let's say, uh, if I've got a three or four columns, three or four features, it's it's more likely that I will be able to, to, to prepare this formula. But your Excel has 100 fields, 100 of columns, and I don't know if column number 70 is three or uh, four times more important than column number, let's say, 14. A, a lot of uh, a lot of combinations, a lot of data association uh, were in this file. So the client almost killed this project um, because he said, okay, it's not impossible, so shut down this project. So, But we, <laughs> it was our colleague, so we would like to help them. And um, we asked for three or four weeks more of our time. So he said, okay, so what kind of other uh, things we can do? Let's try to do machine learning. And it, to be honest, it was our first machine learning project. So the second approach uh, from now, I can call a na naive machine learning. It was very, very naive uh, approach. Uh, it was something like that. We know we've got the data. We've got the data from previous application already processed. So what we should do is get this data, send to the machine learning task to get the result. Sounds easy. <laughs> okay, so we found some libraries and we prepared uh, some script. Data were analyzed. We've got the results on the part of the data set, of course, because the, the huge data set was huge. And, uh, and we failed. And we completely failed. The question is why? Because this, the, the, the second approach, a naive machine learning, was heavily inspired by two books. First one, copying and pasting from the Stack Overflow. <laughs> and the second one was trying stuff until it works. So never read this book, never. <laughs> um, so our, our second approach was very, very perfect on the part of the data where the algorithms were prepared to work with, but when we past a whole production data set, the result and the accuracy of this algorithm was very, very uh, low. The interesting stuff and uh, a reason for, for this one is, and the things to remember, is a doing without the knowing is a recipe for the failure, always, and no question about it. Um, we failed because we didn't know how the machine learning works and what we should do to work with machine learning. And uh, the third approach and the final was data-oriented machine learning workflow, where the machine, -oriented machine learning algorithms wasn't the most important part of this approach because the algorithm is not the most important part. Okay, so... The question is, <laughs> what is the data oriented? What is the machine learning? What is the workflow? The machine learning, the, the, the whole definition from the Wikipedia is, we can say the computer program is set to learn with experience. We've got something called experience with respect to some class of task. We've got something called task. And the performance measure, one more time, performance measure. If it's performance at this task as measured by uh, parameter improved with experience. So no matter what kind of what kind of uh, task you would like to perform, you need to measure the accuracy of the result and improve, improve, and improve. So um, from the <laughs> this definition uh, in the graphical form, it's like that we've got the data, and we need to prepare this data as an input for some machine learning task. And then we can some, uh, do some learning and validating to get some result. And uh, we would like to, to monitor these results 
in the context of the of the performance of these results. And uh, sometimes these algorithms will be wrong. And then we need to, 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 to establish an experience loop. And if you if you see that your machine learning workflow is wrong, just fix this decision and take another loop. Update your, your input data set and uh, train another model and another, 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 another. In this project, I mentioned um, we started from the single single model, single task uh, for all the websites we would like to check, but the final solution was a set of the models, set of the task, depending on the, on the type of the website. We had different analytics for the WordPress and different analytics for the blogs and different analytics for the uh, forums and the news portals, et cetera, et cetera. So, what kind of task we can do with machine learning? We can automatically classify some items. This, this project was about automatic classification. We can use some regression. We would like to predict values. For example, I would like to predict what tomorrow temperature will be based on some humidity, uh, current temperature, cloud level, et cetera, et cetera. We can do some clustering algorithms. I would like to automatically cluster my data. I don't know how it should be clustered. It should be clustered. Or use a dimensional introduction. If I've got 100 columns in the Excel and I would like to draw a two-dimensional picture, is it possible? No. You need to apply a dimensionality reduction. You need to prepare a new features based on, on, on previous feature. Or finally, maybe you would like to, to, to get some associations rule. And uh, the example of the association rule, in the internet there is a very interesting data set called uh, Titanic. Very, very <laughs> creepy. Titanic set contains all the data about the Titanic passengers, about the, the age, about the sex, about uh, is information. It was a passenger on the crew. And the most important information from this data set is this person live after the, the, the catastrophe or not. So it was survivor or not. Using the association rule algorithms, you can automatically detect what was the reason, what was the most important reason that this particular, uh, <laughs> not the user, passenger survived. It was the information about the class of the, of the ticket or maybe the age or maybe the, or maybe the, um, the sex or some other elements. So if you know what kind of task you can perform with machine learning, you've got different methods to learn <laughs> the machine learning model. You can use some supervised learning when you've got some input to your algorithm and you've got some output. And then you can put both informations to the algorithm and the algorithm should find a correlation with the input and the output data. In this project I mentioned with backlinks, we decided to, to, to hire and CEO experts to classify part of our data sets. So we had the input, all the features, like number of uh, H1, H2, H3 headers, links, et cetera, et cetera. And we've got um, the output, the information from the experts, is this link okay or not? Both information were injected to the supervised algorithms and all the data sets uh, unprocessed by the expert were automatically analyzed by an algorithm and accuracy of these algorithms was high. If you've got only input layer, input data set without the output, so this is an unsupervised algorithm, this algorithm will be, rain, uh, will be learned without supervised from your side. A reinforcement learning is learning when the algorithm decides about the, about the results and the results are automatically <laughs> applied to your system and the, 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 the system uh, had the feedback to your algorithm. Hey, it was okay decision. Yeah, it wasn't a good decision. So you would like to, let's say, uh, implement uh, machine learning for the, the chess game, yeah, 
you can use a reinforcement learning. If you would like to use this kind of algorithms to learn your car how to drive, <laughs> it's not the best idea. So pff, you hit the, the, the tree, so it wasn't the best idea to turn right, for example. So the talk before this one was by Marco Pivetta. Great talk about the event sourcing. And uh, I would like to show you how you can use a machine learning to extend this, 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 this problem a little bit. Uh, Marco had an application about the coach review. And uh, a couple months ago, we, decided, we discussed with Marco about how we can apply the machine learning, let's say, uh, in the context for predicting the price of the code review for this particular code review, pull request. So we've got the pull request, and we would like to have an algorithm to predict uh, a price. If you have no such feature like that, so you need to spend some time to analyze a file without doing a code review, just analyze a file to predict and get uh, to predict a price and um, give this price to the client. And then you've got decision, okay, we can perform a full code review or not. So this is our data set. We've got the, let's say, a, a pull request URL to the, uh, to the GitHub, and you would like to have a price, what the price should be for this particular pull request. So exactly the same situation. We've got the, 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 the string, so we can't <laughs> convert this string directly if you would like to predict this kind of information, the price. So this is a regression problem. We've got some information and you would like to predict a value. So based on some, some other, uh, some, some initial parameters, we would like to predict a price of the, of the pull request. So if we can convert this URL, let's say, into the number of the files and the overall number of the lines into this file, so we can convert the string into the set of the vectors. Is, sorry, vector of the numbers. Uh, of course, the most important thing and the most important part is to find what kind of feature, what kind of information we would like to have in our input uh, data set. If we would like to start from files, number of the files and overall number of the lines if file, okay, so it's fine. And the regression problem uh, it's like that. We've got, uh, let's say, information about the number of the files. We've got the information about the number of the lines. We've got some data points from our initial data set because the machine learning almost always needs some data uh, to learn at the beginning. And this regression problem should find a correlation with these um, arguments, with this feature. If you've got two features, it's easy. If you've got 100 features, 10,000 features, it's not so, not so easy. It's very, very complicated. So my colleagues from, uh, from one city in Poland has a uh, machine learning system for finding and frauds in the streams of the transaction where every single transaction is uh, described by 10,000 features, 10,000 columns in Excel. So, from the perspective of the code, <laughs> uh, the PHP code, this regression problem okay. from the perspective of the code, this, this regression problem uh, it's very, very easy. It's a whole working um, code. We've got some uh, samples. We've got the information, how many files we've got uh, from the previous uh, code review, what are the number of the lines. We've got the targets, I mean, what was the price of this, of this um, code review. And then we can prepare a machine learning model. A machine learning model, it's a solution of the mathematical equation, nothing more. So instead of implementing all the, all the stuff on our own, we can run this algorithm, we can train this model, and then we can automatically predict the features, the, the values for the data 
which are completely new. So, if you would like to ask what should be the price of the of the pull request where we've got at 24 files and uh, 1800 of the lines, yeah, the price should be like that. If you would like to modify this a little bit, yeah, the price will be automatically calculated. So, of course, this is very, very simple, <laughs> simple demo. We've got only only two parameters involved, and it shouldn't be. <laughs> in the real world, it should be very, very complicated. But um, it's very, very important thing in this in this um, uh, in this moment. One more time: if you don't know your data, it's another receipt for the failure. So, if you would like to start with machine learning, you should apply a UDF approach, not user-defined function, understand your data first. If you don't understand your data, it will be a tragedy. So, example, uh, we've got the files, this data set, you, show, um, you, you, you saw before, and we've got another entry, exactly the same values, but different price. What was the reason that the price was completely different? Maybe our input parameters are not the best. Maybe instead of having information about overall number of the lines, we should have information about the diff lines, how many lines were changed. Yeah. And now it's quite easy to, to notice that this parameter depends on this. So one more time, this this problem uh, is easy to compare with. Uh, the same the same approach. We've got the pull request, so we should transform the input data set to prepare some vector. The better, the better feature we have, the better classification, the better regression we'll have at the end. So what kind of, uh, what kind of features we would like to, to, to prepare or we should prepare? Everything what you think is important couplings, information about the size of the code, information about the language, no matter. Let the machine decide what is the most important parameter. Some algorithms are ready to identify which parameter, which feature is the most important. And this, the, the, the importance of this feature will be much, much higher than other. So if you would like to, to automatically classify your data, so you can run, a, a, let's say, a k-means algorithm. A k-means algorithm uh, may be used, for example, we would like to automatically classify our code review, uh, let's say, to automatically reject some of them. We don't want to do this code reviews. So to show you how the, <laughs> the, the feature works, the Iris dataset uh, is very, very useful. Iris dataset was prepared years ago. It contains information about the flowers, 150 rows of the data, no more. You've got the information about the size of the, of the sepal and the petal, and you've got the information, what is the class label, what is the flower. If you get this data and you perform some uh, exploratory analysis, because the exploratory analysis is mandatory step if you would like to play with machine learning, because understand your data first. You should see probably some separation in your data, and this separation will be uh, able to, to to used by your by your by your algorithm. So, if you run a k-means algorithm, and the k-means algorithm, yeah, this is this is implementation uh, in, in in Python, will be ready to automatically classify your data without providing an information. about the flowers. So this is an example. We've got some uh, data points, and we would run data were automatically, automatically um, uh, classified, uh, sorry, clustered. Sometimes this algorithm is wrong, like this one. But in general situation, is very, very useful. And you can use this algorithm in many, many forms. For example, we use this algorithm in our system to classify uh, 
which user is a real user and which user is a bot. In the context of, of this example, so we can use <laughs> a chemist algorithm, let's say, to automatically uh, detection uh, on the language. Just, uh, just an example. And uh, just you saw, some of the algorithms, like chemists, are not stable. And this is another information. You should understand your algorithm first. Alg understand your data set, understand your algorithm. And then you can run this in production. Of course, there are some advanced algorithms, like fast artificial net ne neural network, where we've got, uh, one more time, the input layer, we've got the input data set, we've got the output data set, and what is behind and what is between these two layers is a set of the neurons. It's a example of computation how, how our brains work. So for PHP, for PHP, there is a, a, a pickle extension called FEN where you can train a fast artificial neural networks model. You can save this model and then you can load this model in your application very, very quickly. It's implemented in C, so it's blazing fast. And uh, in the context of the technology, because uh, as we discussed before this session, is PHP really the best platform to write a huge, huge machine learning installation? To be honest, no. But a <laughs> um, couple of years ago, I was involved in, in Warsaw as a CTO uh, in a huge company. Uh, this company was about preparing and running the recommendation network. We had a single application. Um, we, had, we had a lot of widgets installed on the portals in the Poland, and we got a traffic from these websites. Over 100, oh, sorry, 1,100 very, very popular websites in Poland. We got all the traffic from these websites. Behind our system were just single PHP application using a standard PHP, a, a, a MySQL databases, a RabbitMQ workers, because the RabbitMQ are very, very popular and useful. And this application, uh, using the techniques you, 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 you saw, was able to, to identify very, very, and propose very, very um, individual recommendation. What kind of content you should see to generate more page view for our clients? We had some uh, advertisements behind this, this algorithm to make some money. And this application was able to, 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 to perform billions, billions of page views per month running a single PHP application. So, if you would like to start, a PHP is uh, it's a great, great uh, element. Whoa, 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 sorry. One of my colleagues from the community in Poland wrote a library, PHP-ML, which is a set of the machine learning, uh, machine learning algorithm. If you would like to start with machine learning, just run this library and the play played with the data sets you've got already already in the demo with a price calculation is based on this library if you would like to perform some mm, let's say bigger setups you've got plenty of options you can run the scikit-learn uh, python library it's a very very popular set of most modern machine learning algorithm if you are a c++ developer mlpack shark if you are Java developer, so deep learning, Apache Mahout, bunch of the option, even for the Spark. In our project with, uh, with uh, CO and uh, the, the backlink classification, we use an R language. R language is a language for the statistical computation, and uh, the PHP application uh, was responsible for fetching, storing, uh, processing the data, but the classification were implemented in the R um, language. Uh, the R project was demonized, and uh, the PHP application communicates with this the server. The whole the whole uh, code written in R was just one screen, one screen 
to fix this business issue. And um, because it's always not about not about the, the machine learning. It's all about the data preparation, understanding of our data set, understanding of the algorithms. And our language is very, very interesting and uh, because one library called Caret. Caret is a unified interface for over 150 machine learning algorithms. So you need to know only few methods, few uh, few functions from the from the caret to play with over 150 algorithms. It's brilliant, and we use this library in our project. If you if you know the R, you can use a shiny. Shiny is a web framework. You can create a machine learning um, web application with brilliant UI, just with s small pieces of the code. Or you can even uh, use the Apache, which is a handler for Apache server, to expose uh, a RESTful APIs for your machine learning models. So you see a bunch of the option, bunch of the option. The most important things in this focus on the ideas, not the tools, because the Ideas are immortal, <laughs> and the tools will change tomorrow, maybe after tomorrow, or, on the, or maybe next year. But the, the ideas are still exactly the same. And even more interesting and more important part, on a daily basis, you will probably not write a, a, a machine learning from the scratch. You should always use a good, good machine learning library. And if you know your data set, if you know um, what kind of problem you've got, and, but you don't know what kind of algorithms you should apply. So visit, visit a, a, a scikit, and this is a part of the scikit algorithm cheat sheet, where you can follow the questions, follow the, the signs, uh, to get what kind of machine learning algorithm I should use. If I know what kind of algorithm I should use, okay, I can use a library. Scikit or any other. But please remember that uh, machine learning is not a single run of the algorithm. The <laughs> it's not, it not, 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 the, not the naive machine learning. You should always remember that machine learning is a process. It's a process which starts from defining a problem, then you need to gather your data, understand your data, what your data represents, prepare your data for machine learning. For example, if you've got the price uh, of the car and you've got, uh, you would like to prefer, uh, perform a classification and a regression for calculating, uh, let's say, what should be the price of the cell of this car, it's sometimes very, very tricky part because the price it has always, has always have some uh, context. If you've got some prepared data sets, so then, you can prepare, select, and run your algorithms, tune them. If you've got a different models tuned and different models selected, so you should, choose, you should choose your final model, and then you should validate and prepare this model to production. What do you think? Which step is probably the most important? Which one? preparing the data set. From my experience, yeah, it was always uh, the most important part because if you screw up this part, the rest is not important. So the final thing, this data set, even if you've got an information, let's say this way, <laughs> you've got 10,000 columns, this data set is not the best one because one information is missing. What is the currency for this price review? So that's all from our side. If you've got a questions, I'm sorry we've got no time, so please join me in the speaker's corners. So thank you much, thank you very much for your attention and uh, happy learning your machines.